our program from house to house. Won't you come in and join us for a while in the Word? Won't you join us now? Get your Bible, participate with us as we conclude with our last lesson, the 12th lesson in this series we have called, He is the Beautiful Bridegroom. We are uh, privileged to be able to uh, present our program with the backdrop of the beautiful home of Kevin and Talitha Bayerlin. This particular series is dealing with the testimonial that the Bride of Christ is giving in the Song of Solomon in the fifth chapter of what her bridegroom is like. As she's asking help from her neighborhood, would you help me find him? His presence has been withdrawn. Help me find him. And they ask, well, what is your beloved like? And she begins to say, my beloved is. And then she starts naming different features about him. And the more she does, the more her soul is accelerating with passion for her beloved. You and I, the more we hear of the word of God and what Jesus is like, the more we should have a thirst and a hunger to follow after him and to pursue all that the Lord is offering to us. So today we conclude with lesson number 12, and this one is called His Whole Being. In other words, in entirety, what the, bro bro the bridegroom is like with an overall expression this is what she says. All right, ladies, you still got Song of Solomon handy? Song of Solomon 5, verse 16. From the Amplified Version, this is what she expresses and says. His voice and speech are exceedingly sweet. Yes, he is altogether lovely. The whole of him delights and is precious. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. She says, yes, he is. He's altogether lovely. Everything about him, anything she could think of in any aspect, she couldn't find a fault in him. She says, he's just lovely altogether. You know, having walked with the Lord many years, I have to say, everything about my Lord I've found is all together. It's just lovely. It's just lovely. We don't have a vocabulary rich enough to fully adequately descri describe and express who and what the Lord really is. We just kind of scratch and dab at it, I would say, in our feeble attempts to share with those that don't know him what the Lord truly is. Every individual must taste and partake for himself to, be, to get a part of that adventure of knowing who and what the Lord could mean in their life. But she just sums it up at the conclusion of telling her neighborhood friends that are going to help her find him that he is just lovely altogether. What more could she say? She says, this is my beloved. This is my friend. When you think of the word lovely, lovely, when she says he's just, you know, as a whole, altogether he's lovely, that word lovely, according to the dictionary, means having qualities that inspire love, affection, or admiration. And the word beautiful. Well, that's what our Lord is. He has qualities that inspire us to love, aspire us to have affection for the things of God, inspire us to admire the bridegroom, Jesus Christ. And he is beautiful. I think, ladies, hold on to Song of Solomon now. <clears throat> but Isaiah 33, verse 17, if you want to find that with me quickly, this is what the promise is. In the King James Version, it says, Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is very far off. Yes, I hold that as a promise dear to my bosom. That these eyes... Though they may 
be growing more dim and not be what they used to be when I was young. But with these eyes, a day will come when I shall see the King of Kings and I'll see him in all his beauty. And these same eyes shall behold a lamb that's very far off. That is a blessed hope and a promise we're entitled to embrace. Those of you that are dealing with eye problems, some of you have health problems to do with your eyes, and it's such a disappointment and oftentimes a discouraging thing, and it can become a real depression to you. Embrace that hope to your breast that these eyes that God has given you, in your glorified body, God's going to be able to allow you to see like you've never seen before, and you're going to behold your king in his beauty. No longer will there be those visual limitations. And you're going to see the land that is very far off that he has prepared. Didn't he say, I go to prepare a place for you. And if it wasn't so, I would have told you. Yes, what he's preparing, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that the Lord has prepared for them that wait for him and for those that love him. We shall behold the king. Okay. Let's think for a moment about David and how he felt about the beautiful Lord and the beauty that he had found in his relationship with the Lord. Ladies, I want you to quickly turn now to Psalms 27 and verse 4. I'm going to read from the King James and the Amplified Version this verse. And I want you to see some steps in that that you can appropriate in your own walk with God, all right? D David says, as a psalmist, he says, one thing. One thing, I want to emphasize the one thing. See, this is where his focus is at. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Why? To behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. This is David's concept of the beautiful beloved, the Lord that he had come to know and to walk with. The same Lord that chose him to be king and set him up as king of Israel. He come to a place where his main focus and priority in life was this. It was this one thing. And I think the problem with us many times is we not have we not we do not have just one thing as our priority. We've got so much going on in our lives that our life becomes like a scramble. But we need to narrow our lives down and really again reset our priorities and we see what's really what's out front pulling the train of our life with all the cars loaded behind with all of the cares of life and so forth. Is there one thing you've got out front that you aim for, you head for, is your main purpose and goal in life? David's was this, and this is what he did. He desired it. He, you've got to desire it. It begins with a desire. You can't do it if you don't have desire. And let me tell you, if you have no desire about the things of God, why don't you ask God to give you desire? Because he says, if you hunger and you thirst for his righteousness, you will be filled. So ask him to give you desire if you're not motivated spiritually and you don't feel spiritual desire. Yeah, I have to ha admit there's been times in my life where I reached some dry places and I didn't seem to have the umption and the gumption, as they say, to get up and go with it. I just was kind of lazy and I needed a little bit of a push. And I had to say, oh, Lord, stir my heart again. Stir up the gift of God within me again. Salt my tongue. Make me thirsty again. Renew me in vision. Renew me in spiritual appetite. Stimulate me to move onward and forward in the things of God. Give me desire. So that's where it begins. One thing I have desired. It begins with desire. After the desire, then what do you do? If you really have genuine desire, you begin to seek. Didn't the Lord say that we should ask and we should seek and we should knock? In other words, pursue. So after you have desire, 
then you should move into seeking that desire. Don't just stay there in the motion of desire and say, well, I desire, I desire, I want, I want. No, move on into action and begin to seek the things of the Lord. You say, well, how do I seek? Where do I seek? Okay, you need to seek him in prayer. You need to seek him in the word of God. You need to seek him in the fellowship with the believers. That's a good, simple, basic place to start. Seek him. I will seek after him is what David said because I have this desire. And something that was really important to him was that he might dwell a part of the household of faith all the days of his life. Don't say, well, I'm going to jump in the pond, see if the water's too cold, see if the water's too hot. If I don't like it, I'm going to jump out because I don't really want to swim. No. Say, I desire, I'm going to seek, and I am going to dwell. When I find my place to begin to move into the things of God, I'm going to plan on sticking with it. It's not going to be, you know, a flash in the pan and then you're out. When trouble comes, hardship comes, you say this requires too much discipline to walk with God. No, set your goal that you will dwell, which means to abide. In other words, make a permanent decision and choice. And he wanted to be a part of the house of God all the days of his life. That is my goal, is that all the days of my life, I might be a part of the household of God. What did he want to do in the household of faith? It says that he might behold what? The beauty of the Lord. This series is about the beautiful bridegroom as a, the sweet little gal in the Song of Solomon portrayed there describes her beloved. She's describing him as beautiful. He is beautiful to her. He's altogether lovely. Well, David, though he was masculine, he was a man of war, a man of power and authority. He didn't find it a feminine thing to think of the Lord as being beautiful. No, because it's an inward thing. It's an inward thing that you feel of how beautiful and awesome the Lord is. But he wanted to always be able to behold and to see the beauty of the Lord. What do you look for? When you get up in the morning and you start out your day, what are you looking for? Do you know what you're looking for often is what you're going to find? If you're looking for the negatives in life, that's what you're going to find. If you're looking for the beautiful things in life, that's what you're going to find. The Lord will let you see them. But you need to set your sights to behold the beauty of the Lord. Do you know I heard of a lady that actually took the time to go through her Bible to find all the negative things about God. And when she was through, she was turned against God. She did not go through looking for the good things about the Lord or she would have found the good things about the Lord. But she, she had an approach that was negative. What is your approach to the things of God? If you're looking to behold his beauty like David the psalmist did, you're going to see it. You're going to find it. You will not miss it, my friend. Secondly, another thing he wanted to do while he was a part of the temple of the household of faith, he wanted to inquire in the Lord's temple, which means he wanted to ask questions. He wanted to research. He wanted to learn. He wanted to become more informed and have a better understanding of the things of God. Child of God, it's wonderful to behold the beauty of the Lord, but now move on a little further. I'd push you a little further. Ask some questions. Did you know that in the scriptures, God even said that he waited to be inquired of? 